Hello, my friends, and welcome. My name is Dennis, and this is the latest update from Ukraine. Here we have the Kharkiv area where Russia got some of the success on the north part of it. The technical chart really shows you the different perspective, my friends, because here we can see the defense lines that Russia was able to build just recently here near to Novy Burlik. They start and already build some of the defense lines, and of course, they have them in Kazacha Lopen and they start their attack towards Ukrainian side near to Izbitske. As you see here, Russia was able to connect all of their split forces on the north and push away Ukrainian forces to the south part away from Russian border. However, Ukrainian forces have lots of their troops here near to the Kharkiv area and I do not expect Russia to penetrate this huge defense from Ukrainian side. So if you speak about the Kharkiv city itself, well my friends, the north part of the city is under the threat of being attacked by the Russian artillery and here we have some of the fighting near to Ruski Tuski or there is some artillery shelling on that villages. And of course I wouldn't say that Kharkiv is a safe place for civilians. Half of the population of the city was just evacuated but half decided to stay at home. And now let's move a little bit to the east where Russia built their new defense lines. Actually there is a bridge, I don't know if it's okay or not, but probably Ukrainian troops might have used it for the offensive, for counterattack against Russians here and Russia understood that they should build defense lines Probably they don't have intentions to cross this river over here to go to the Kharkiv as for now because yeah, why would you build the defense lines in that case? Alright, we moved to the eastern part of Ukraine and lots of things are happening here my friends. So let's go firstly to Izum area where Russia doing their attack on Ukrainian forces. We have 81st Brigade defending this part of the territory and Russia was able to take Svetohirsk under its control and from this chart we already see that they are very close to Bogorodichne and actually fighting in the city itself. As I say to you this direction of their attack from Izum is more profitable for them because they already crossed the Siversk Internet River. They don't need to cross it like here near to Liman then they took Liman around two weeks ago and now they need to cross this uh, big river over here to Radio Gorodok and Slavansk. It's very difficult uh, from the military point of view. They have the natural obstacle, but here they don't have the obstacles, open fields, small villages, main road to Slavansk. So probably going to put the main forces. They already put the main forces for the main attack towards Slavansk, my friends, but still not pushing as hard as in Severodonetsk. Severodonetsk is here. My friends, they push really hard hard from all possible directions and here we have the information about the bridges. As you probably know we have the confirmed information from the Lugansk uh, region governor. He said that all the bridges from Serdanetsk to Lysychansk were destroyed and probably gonna build new bridges just to evacuate uh, the civilians and our military guys who stayed there in the airport and uh, you see Russia took Metelkina, Voronova and Vaspar of the city we can honestly say that we are still controlling the factory area and there are around 500 civilians from what I know from the information I, I have some say around 1,000 of civilians it's very bad my friends because I don't know how they would cross uh, the river without the bridges but still we have one bridge on the north but for that part you actually need to cross the river over here and this bridge from what I know also was destroyed so it's the summer time my friends the water in rivers is warm right now so probably civilians if they have good health if uh, they are not infants probably gonna cross the river on their own or maybe using the small boats but for the army my friends I don't know the way how to properly evacuate our troops how to change their position from the airport etc because uh, you see Russia put lots of their forces from all of kind of directions and also they are pushing towards the Lysychansk you can see the fire here means it was shelling from the Russian side so they use artillery continue to use we have their troops over there as you can see and now they are offending from the Papasna area I told you that the Katerinovka is here 
it's uh, not under Russian control from what I see from the tactical chart I think it's more precise chart compared to the deep state but deep state also can have proper updates so Zolote and Katerinovka under uh, the threat of being circled Russia is going to Vrubovka and also Hirske I think it's time to take our troops from Zolote to Hirske over here and reinforce our troops near to the Lysychansk as you can see Ukraine has lots of armed forces at this uh, part of the front lines because as well Russia puts their main forces to reach Severodonetsk for them it's the main go to get this city under their control because it's one of the biggest cities in Lugansk Oblast my friends so now I think it's time to go to Lysychansk from all directions and go to defense and now we are using these tactics my friends we change our positions we give some ground to Russia little by little but we move our forces to prepare defense lines and each time Russia offenses they enter to the new defense lines and because of that each time they got severe losses so for us we need to cause them severe losses then we are on defense because we are still waiting for the confirmation of the heavy weapons to be delivered to Ukraine massively on this tactical chart you can see that Bakhmut and Lysychansk are still connected with this very important supply road but it's not the only way we have the other road uh, near to the Siversk but again it's very close to the Russian positions also can reach Bakhmut so Russia tried to reach Bakhmut around two weeks ago they started the massive offense but during this operation they changed their, their goal and now they're heading northbound towards Lysychansk and now they want to circle all of this area my friends firstly they want to get Serdanetsk and after that Lysychansk mostly from the south on the north they wanted to cross the river but unsuccessfully and I think two weeks ago they were able to capture Svitlodarsk and also Novoluhansk and after that our forces retreat a little bit changed the position and blown up this bridge so Russia cannot cross the river over here but still performing their attack towards Roti they want to take uh, the part of this road to go to Bahmut from this direction from the south because from this direction they were not successful all right south and Donetsk as you can see we have some of the shelling near to Marinka of DFK but so far Russian troops were unable to break our defense lines over there uh, throughout the war actually already 111th day and they are unable to break our defense over here with the so-called DNR Republic forces here in the south everything is standstill my friends but not calm Russia put their forces away from this part mainly and concentrated them on the eastern part and now we are near to Mikhailov and Kherson so we used the situation then Russia retreated a little bit they removed some of the forces and because of that we started our counter-attack here near to Lozove we took Davidov Brid but recently Russia started to push uh, here to Davidov Brid and so far Ukraine is able to control this part of the territory and we also started to push towards Kherson from Alexandrovka and some say that we are near to Tomina Balka which is not far away from Kherson my friends and I expect this region to be freed from Russian occupiers very soon then we'll have enough weapons to withstand what I see my friends that weapons that already have been delivered to Ukrainian army did great job on the eastern part of our territory and there were just few units so then we'll have hundreds of units my friends for sure there's going to be the massive counter-attack of Ukraine also foreign legion helps a lot they fight in the Severodonetsk and they were able to recapture vast part of the city just one week ago now obviously Russia got reinforcements and push hard on Severodonetsk and we had to retreat to factory and after a while probably we're gonna cross the river and stay in Lysychansk defending the city and I want to share my regards to the guys who support Ukraine who understand 
why we are defending and we are fighting really for the freedom not only for ukraine but for the european and western values that were somehow forgotten by lots of politicians especially in european union my friends you are awesome you support ukraine and i love you a lot you can press the like and also if you want to support me there is the link in the video description there are many ways how you can support this channel and part of the funds i spend for the charity to help ukrainian people over here i wish you a peaceful sky wherever you are have a great time